Well, good morning, Selby Pastoral Charge, and welcome to this time of worship for August 8th, 2021. This morning, we're at one of Eastern Ontario's most iconic locations. The 200-kilometer Rideau Canal is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, attracting thousands of boaters and tourists each year. When completed in 1832, its purpose was to bring communities together with an efficient transportation route across the heart of the province. It unified and strengthened communities susceptible to isolation and even attack. Well, today we're looking at how the Holy Spirit cuts across difference to build a new unified family. Paul writes, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to, to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is over all and through all and in all. So today we are, as we anticipate, being drawn together in one body once again in the weeks ahead, let's celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit who draws us together this morning. So come, Christians join to sing. Alleluia, amen. Let's sing together. Today, we're at Kingston Mills Locks along the Rideau Canal. Back in 1784, the British government built a sawmill and a gristmill in this location to help the newly settled loyalists who were trying to carve homes and farms out of this rugged land. In the 1830s, the lock was built to allow boats to lower about 20 feet to the level of Lake Ontario. This was the first and most important connection in the Rideau Canal. It was so important that a blockhouse was built on this site and manned by British soldiers to prevent American invasion through the lock system. So now, let's begin our time of worship with a prayer. Gathering God, thank you for your faithfulness throughout this pandemic season. You have sustained your church, built new connections, maintained old ones. May we continue to be faithful to you and your calling for the church. As we begin to think about what lies ahead, give us courage to be your witnesses in word and deed. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now it's our time for our special music. So here's Doug McConnell. Will do the same. 
just him and see You'll never be lonely again Never again If you will open your heart's door to Him So just brush away the tears And forget your foolish fears You'll never be lonely Well, now it's my time to have a conversation with our young people. And today is our second week where we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And actually, I think that these locks behind me might be a useful object lesson as we think about the work of the Holy Spirit. Back when the Rideau Canal was built, it was designed to connect all the communities along the Rideau River by a waterway that boats could travel. But that was no small job because in lots of places, water traveled downhill. And while that might be fun to do in a whitewater kayak, it's no fun to do in a big ship or boat. So they needed to find a way to level out the water in those places so that the boats could pass through smoothly. The answer? Locks. Locks trap a boat inside the lock and then raise or lower the water level so that it can go downhill or uphill without having to go over a waterfall or through rapids. So how is this like the Holy Spirit? Well. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does is connect different kinds of people. The earliest followers of Jesus were known for be, being kind of strange because, uh, because they connected people who were totally different. Rich people hung out with people who were, well, not so rich. Men and women worked together. People from different ethnicities were all part of the same church. And that was pretty unusual back then. And it's the Holy Spirit who helps us to navigate our differences to be God's family. Rich people were taught to share what they had. Uh, they learned that men and women could serve together. Uh, they had uh, uh, people from different cultures and, and they were able to look past one another's differences uh, to see what God sees. The church became like a lock. It allowed us to navigate our differences for Jesus' sake. And the power that makes that possible comes from the Holy Spirit who lives in us and teaches us to love one another. Well, now it's time to sing our hymn for the young at heart. Let's sing together, Build Your Kingdom Here. Yeah. 
Well, today is the second week of our sermon series called Hidden Power, where we're looking at how we can connect to the power of the Holy Spirit. Last week, I began meeting with six young people for a confirmation class. So each week for the next six weeks, we will be hearing the word of God come from these, these young confirmands. So let's listen now to our scripture passage for today. Today I'm reading from the letter to the Galatians, beginning at chapter 3, verse 26. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew or gentle, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And here's according to the promise. When the set time had fully come, God sent a son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an ear. This is the word of the Lord. Well, now let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come so that we might hear what you have for us today. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Facebook is one of the world's most powerful companies. Roughly three billion people have a Facebook profile, and the company's market capitalization is currently over a trillion dollars. In Canada, 14 million people report checking their Facebook news feeds every single day. But what is Facebook's product? What are they selling? Well, they have a couple of different target customers. A company with that much intimate information about people is bound to be of interest to all kinds of enterprising organizations. But what they're selling you is the promise of relationship, of connection. And let's be honest, Facebook is pretty good at what it does. Seeing what our friends and family are up to in a minute-by-minute -minute news feed can be titillating, even as our contact with these people is mostly superficial. And yet, despite the fact that our generation is the most digitally connected in history, it's also one of the most lonely, polarized. Facebook is not only a place to see what our friends and family are up to, but it's a place to be indoctrinated by hateful rhetoric, divided by political ideology, and made to feel inferior because we don't seem to have what others seem to have. For all of Facebook's power and influence, it can't seem to give us what we need most, authentic relationship. Well, today is the second week of our sermon series called Hidden Power, where we're looking at what it means to tap into the hidden power of the Holy Spirit. And today we're looking at one aspect of the Spirit's power that might just surprise us. Throughout the New Testament, we see followers of Jesus trying to come to terms with the power that has come from the one from Nazareth but they mostly misunderstand it. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Ask Jesus' hopeful disciples. Nope, that's not what God intends to do with his power. Grant that one of my two sons may sit at your right and the, and the other on your left at the kingdom, asked the mother of the Zebedee boys. Jesus replies, you don't know what you're talking about. Jesus' disciples find themselves in an argument about who is the greatest, and Jesus tells them simply, you're not to be like that. And instead, the greatest among you is the one who acts like the least. You see, when the power of God comes into our midst, all of our old categories and ideas about power, influence, and privilege get overturned. Power in the world is all about individual privilege, cultural advantage, national gain. This kind of power often leads to dangerous outcomes, even violent ends. But the power of the Holy Spirit is different from the world's forms of power. So today, we're going to look at the first thing that happens when the Holy Spirit shows up in power. And that's family. Paul says, says to us this morning, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. All of our old categories, Jew and Gentile, slave and free, male and female, are redundant, Paul says. 
This is because God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, and the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you are made a member of a family. This is a strange idea in a culture that is mostly focused on self-actualization and, and individual rights. What do you mean the Holy Spirit forms us into a new family? I just want God to save me, to, to bless me, to give me a little boost. But the Holy Spirit's first act in the life of a believer is to change their family status. Christianity is not only about you and God, but it's also about learning to be a member of a family. A family that spans time and space, and that one day will find healing and redemption together in God's new creation. Now, as I tell you this, let me be perfectly honest, at times I find this challenging. God's family is a diverse group. Much like blood relatives, spiritual ones can be challenging. There was even a time I tried to disown my spiritual family. It was nothing short of a miracle, actually. The church was at, we were attending was embroiled in turmoil, as happens from time to time. There were factions and politics. The presbytery was called in, a review was had, a lawyer was hired to listen to both sides and to make a recommendation. It got very messy. We left. Who needs that in their life? I was done with church at that point. I can be a Christian on my own, right? Well, but before long, and, and due to coincidences too foggy to explain, there we were sitting in the pew of a different church. Other than masochism, I, I can't think of any reasonable reason for going back, but the Holy Spirit does his work in the family. Apparently, you can't follow Jesus on your own. One day, Jesus was teaching, and someone told him, outside are your mother and your brothers wanting to speak to you. Jesus replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus just redefined the family for all of his followers. I recently heard a commentator said, to, to all who brag, I would do anything for my family. The Holy Spirit proclaims, that's not good enough for Jesus. When we worship God, the individual is critiqued by the communal, the prophetic and pastoral meet. And the Trinity teaches us the joy of living our lives out of control. One day, Jane showed up at Marjorie's door early one morning. Marjorie was the, the, in the last stages of a terminal illness. The church sent me to bring you this banana loaf and to pray for you, explained Jane. After a few minutes of conversation, Marjorie tearfully revealed that she had been praying to God for support and reassurance, but she said, I, I feel alone, as if God has totally forgotten me. Marjorie, Jane responded, I want you to believe that God sent me. Maybe I'm the way that God showed up and answered your prayers. Will Willimon says, through the Holy Spirit, the church becomes for the world Christ's body. The way the world is given continuing bodily assurance that Jesus Christ is Lord. For me, one of the signs that the Holy Spirit is at work is that people start to show up. You know, over the last year and a half, we've had a lot of people show up around here. It's got me wondering, what's God up to? I remember when Andrea and I showed up at a new church, a new couple wondering if uh, we'd fit into an already well-established community. We were nervous, wondering how we would be received. They were great. We quickly felt at home. A group of strangers went out of their way to make us feel like we were part of their family. Before long, we were singing in the choir, serving on the session, contributing in significant ways. I'm convinced that the Holy Spirit was at work. The church is one of the world's only organizations where we aren't drawn together by a common set of interests. We aren't alike in significant ways. There may well be opportunities for like-minded people but that's not the basis of our community. This loose collection of folks, diverse in age, political affirmation, financial status, educational degree, is first and foremost a sign of what God has done, making us all one of his children and calling us into a family. 
I once heard about a little congregation in the south. They'd been uh, saving uh, to build a church and move out of their rented space in a school gymnasium. A couple in the church had raised four foster children. And one Sunday, during the prayers of the people, the couple said that, that social services had asked them to take on three more who, who had become homeless. They asked the church for prayers to help them find a place where they could care for all of these little ones. With that, one of the oldest members in the congregation blurted out, you don't need to pray for that. Let's give them our building fund money. There was applause. That Sunday, the church gave their entire building fund to enable that family to have a bigger home. Sounds like the work of the Holy Spirit, if you ask me. Followers of Jesus are people who have been called into community and then sent on a mission. Jesus commands us to live courageous, countercultural, demanding lives. He ordered us, orders us to, to love one another, to pray for our enemies, to, to take up our cross and follow him. But he doesn't expect us to do thing, these things on our own. He sends us his Holy Spirit to give us the power to be a community, a family. The church is a sign of the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a, a power totally unique in the world. Despite our very human shortcomings and foibles, the church continues just as God intends it. No longer powerful in a conventional sense, Maybe God has the church right where he wants it. Our biggest companies may claim that they have the market on connection and relationship cornered. But what the free market doesn't realize is that true connection and relationship isn't something that can be bought and sold. It's a gift given by the Holy Spirit as a sign that God's ongoing project of redeeming the world is still in motion. Jesus once prayed for his church saying that they all may be one. The Holy Spirit, the power of God, makes all of that one day possible. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Well, freely we have received and freely we give. It's now time for our offering. And if you'd like to send your offering this morning, you can do so by, by mail, by e-transfer, or by joining our automatic banking option called PAR. And so I offer this simple blessing with our thanks over all the gifts that we have received, gifts that are sustaining our ministry to this very day. We are so grateful. So these are the, the work of our hands and the love of our hearts. May they be a blessing to this community and the wider world in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer. We will pray as we normally do. We will lift up our gratitudes to God. We will pray for the, the things around the world and in our own community that weigh on our hearts. And finally, we'll lift up those folks who are in need of prayer today by name. So let's pray together. Oh, holy God, thank you for this opportunity to be in such a, a beautiful place and to be reminded of the power of your Holy Spirit to, uh, to bring us into your community, your family. So often our faith becomes a personal thing. Right? We're told by our culture that you, you should keep your faith private. But Lord, you teach us that we are to be a family, that we are to be communal. We are to share our faith with one another. That's a challenge, uh, but we pray that your spirit will lead us in that regard. So God, we come before you first and foremost with all of our many blessings, our blessings of summer weather, of uh, the ability to get away and to, uh, to renew ourselves in this time. Lord, so we come before you with those, those things that, uh, that we are so grateful for today in the silence of this moment. And now we pray about those things that weigh in our hearts and minds. We see in the news or we read in the newspaper. Lord, we hear of forest fires in BC. We hear of a Delta variant, more contagious, more severe than, than ever before. We pray for those who are not vaccinated for, for all kinds of reasons. Lord, we pray for the countries around the world where they have no vaccinations and are really struggling uh, with, uh, with COVID in this time. Lord, so we, we come before you with all of those things that we, we hear in the news. We pray uh, for those folks affected by severe weather, by, uh, uh, by violence, by, by hatred. We list those things now. And now, O oh Lord, we come before you with the names of those folks who weigh on our hearts and minds. There, there are some who are unwell, and so we, we lift up your, uh, your, we pray for your healing mercies upon them. We pray for those who are just having a difficult time and, uh, and finding it awkward to, to get back into the rhythm of life. We pray for our students, our young people, as they continue to enjoy their summer, a summer unlike uh, any other, I suppose. We pray for those who are working. Uh, we pray for those who are, uh, who are not working, who are home and, uh, and feeling kind of in between. So Lord, we, we lift up all of those names to you now. And now we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, as our time of worship draws to a close, let's join together in singing our closing hymn. Let's sing together. Well, thanks for joining us again this morning. As I've alluded to a couple of times this morning, we have begun to think about what's next for our church. We're still working out the details, but we hope to, uh, to open both churches in the coming weeks while also sustaining a rich online ministry. 
Our joint session, that's the committee responsible for all spiritual matters and decisions within our church, will be developing a plan for that soon. In the meantime, we're grateful for your ongoing support and encouragement as we navigate these uncharted waters. Together, we are the body of Christ. So until next week, go with God's blessing. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace so that you may thrive and serve, empowered by the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go now in peace. Amen. Amen.